All right, let's get right into it. If you deal with data storage, you know how it goes. A new software release comes out and you know it's mostly bug fixes, a few minor tweaks, but once in a blue moon, a release comes along that isn't just an update. It's a genuine shift in how you should think about your entire strategy. And folks, that's exactly what we're looking at with OpenZFS 2.4.0. For, well, forever, anyone managing storage has been stuck with this classic problem. It's like the iron triangle of storage, right? You want it to be fast, you want it to have massive capacity, and of course you want it to be cheap. The catch? You've always had to pick just two. In this dilemma, this trade-off has really shaped how we've all built our storage systems for decades, forcing us into a corner between two very different kinds of hardware. This table just lays it out perfectly, doesn't it? On one hand, you've got your super fast flash storage, your SSDs and NVMe drives. I mean, they're blazingly fast, but your capacity is limited and wow, they can get expensive. On the other side, you have your good old spinning hard drives. You get tons of capacity for cheap, but for a lot of jobs, they're just slow. The dream has always been to get all three, high speed, high capacity, and low cost. But it's always been this frustrating balancing act. Well, until now. So what's the magic here? How does OpenZFS suddenly let you break this rule we've all been living by? Well, it all starts with a major upgrade to a feature that is everyone talking, something called the Special VDEV. So what in the world is a Special VDEV? Just think of it like a small, elite special ops team for your big, slow and steady army of hard drives. It's a small set of really fast drives, usually SSDs, that you add to your main pool. And its whole job is to handle the stuff that spinning disks are absolutely terrible at, like all the metadata lookups and storing millions of tiny little files. Okay, this is the game changer right here. Before this update, the special VDEV was awesome, but if you needed absolutely top tier performance for things like databases or NFS, workloads that need to know their data is safely written to disk immediately, you also needed a whole separate device for a write cache called a slog. With 2.40, that requirement is gone. You can now put that slog right onto the special VDEV itself. This is huge. It simplifies your whole pool design and lets one set of expensive, fast drives do two incredibly important jobs at once. And don't just take my word for it. The community is buzzing about this. As this user points out, a properly set up special VDEV doesn't just supercharge your writes. It's so good that it can often completely replace a separate read cache, the L2RC. It's a crazy gain in efficiency. So what's the bottom line here? It means that building a hybrid pool, mixing fast SSDs with massive hard drives is no longer a compromise. In fact, it's now one of the smartest designs out there. You're getting the snappy responsive feel of NVMe storage, but with the vast affordable capacity of spinning disks, the best of both worlds. But hold on, the special VDEV is the headliner for sure, but that's not the whole story. OpenCFS 2.4.0 is packed with a bunch of other enhancements that just make the whole system smarter and more efficient all around. We're gonna take a quick look at three of these key improvements. How ZFS replicates its data, how it can maintain the integrity of your pool, and how it handles encryption. First up, there's a new command called ZFS rewrite that can now preserve the original birth time of a block of data. Now, why on earth should you care about that? Well, because by knowing when a block was really created, ZFS can be way smarter about figuring out what's actually changed in a snapshot. The result is smaller snapshots, which means faster and way more efficient backups and replications. Next up, a huge quality of life improvement for maintenance. Anyone who's managed a truly massive petabyte scale pool knows the pain of running a scrub to check for data corruption. It can take days. Now, you can actually tell ZFS to only scrub data written within a certain time window. This is an absolute dream for doing any kind of forensic work, letting you zero in on a potential problem without having to scan everything. And finally, native encryption is getting a serious speed boost. Look, we all want security, but nobody wants the performance hit that usually comes with it. Well, thanks to some new AVX2 optimizations, if you're on a modern CPU, you're going to see a really nice performance bump for your encrypted data sets the price of security just got a whole lot cheaper. Okay, we've talked about all the amazing new power you get with this release, but with great power comes great responsibility, as they say. So it's time for a really important reality check on the risks and a little bit of the history that got us here. All right, listen up, because this is the single most important thing you need to understand. A special VDVEV is not a cache. It's not disposable. It is a critical structural part of your pool. 
If you lose your special VDVEV, you lose your entire pool. I'm gonna say that again, you lose it all. So how do you possibly protect against that? Well, the community consensus is crystal clear. Redundancy is not optional here. You must use a mirror for your special VDEV. A two-way mirror is the absolute bare minimum. If it's critical data, you should seriously consider a three-way mirror. Whatever you do, do not skip this step. Now, we also have to be honest and talk about the elephant in the room. The road to 2.4.0 wasn't perfectly smooth. The previous release series, 2.3, had some stability problems that, understandably, left some users feeling a little bit cautious. I mean, people were reporting some really strange and frustrating bugs. Imagine your server losing a massive chunk of its valuable cache memory just because you opened a web browser on it. Yeah, not exactly a confidence booster. The good news is, the developers didn't hide from this. A core dev jumped in and explained exactly what was going on. It was a super technical bug related to how Systemd, which is core to most Linux systems, was managing memory. And most importantly, they confirmed that the fixes are in for the latest versions and are baked right into 240.0. So, let's bring this all together. When you look at all these changes, what does it really mean for the future of storage design? Well, it's pretty clear that the old lines between speed and capacity are starting to get very, very blurry. Look, this release isn't just another number and a change lock. It really is a new toolkit. It gives you a whole new set of strategies to build hybrid storage pools that were either super awkward or just plain impossible before. You can now blend fast flash with cheap bulk capacity in a way that is finally both cost-effective and truly high performance. OpenZFS 2.4.0 really does hand you the power to break free from those old, frustrating compromises of storage. The tools are now in your hands. So the only question left is, with all this new flexibility and power, what are you going to build?